So 18 year old Robert Rocco O'Connor III graduated from St. X over the weekend, but unlike many of his peers, he's already got a full time job. O'Connor, who works as a jockey agent for another 18 year old jockey, CJ McMahon, joins me on the phone to talk about why he's skipping college to pursue that dream. Rocco, thanks for taking a time out. First of all, how did you get involved with this sport at such an early age to be able to do this professionally here so young? Uh, my dad's a trainer, and I've always had a love for horse racing, so that's, I kind of followed my love. How tough is it for people to take you seriously, to get them to take you seriously as an 18-year-old in a profession where I'm sure many of the people are maybe even twice your age who are doing what you do, two and three times your age? It, it is tough, and it's tough. It's a tough sell, but CJ can really ride, and he's proven that, especially down in Louisiana. It's more tough for me so much than him. Um I'm selling something that I'm the same age as, but if I can prove to them and show them that he can ride and what he's done, I think they'll really respect us both for what we're doing. With him, like you say, it's results. He's got things on, on the track. What are the things that you struggle with as trying to pitch to a, a trainer or an owner, whoever it is, that you, you are the right guy to, to put these two parties together? It's a tough pitch because as a, as of right now at Churchill, there's short fields, six, seven horse fields, and you've got the top six, seven jockeys riding the same horses over and over. So there's not much spot there for you to get into a barn and prove to, your, prove to the trainer that you're capable of competing with these guys. You know, you got uh, Rosie from the Prom, Nick Allen Garcia, Joe Rocco here for the first time this year. It's just a tough sell when you have short fields. Yeah, I mean, we read where even Gary Stevens, a guy who's a Hall of Famer, has trouble getting mounts in these short six, seven, eight uh, horse fields. With with McMahon, how do you do? You constantly update people who maybe aren't your clients yet on what he's been able to do, like sending them clippings, that sort of thing. Or what do you what do you do to to sell McMahon to people who may not be as familiar with him as you obviously are? I work everybody. I get up every morning. I'm there by five thirty, and I just walk barn to barn every morning, let them see my face with CJ alongside, and hopefully they see how hard we work. And the day when they can't get a jockey, they just remember our face from working so hard, and we get the opportunity to step in the barn and prove to them that we can do it. Do you have to have McMahon sort of on standby then with some of those fields? If somebody, you know, a jockey gets hurt or if there's an opening somewhere, I mean, how, how do you make sure that they're, they're your first call? Um, it's, it, You can call it standby. It's, um, you just – you just hope is all it is. And a lot of the trainers here now are um, telling us, oh, just wait to Ellis. It'd be a lot easier spots. Some of these jockeys will be gone, and we'll give you the opportunity to prove yourself. And that won't be bad because we go to Ellis, prove ourselves, then come back in the fall to Churchill, and we could maybe make a name for ourselves. What's your relationship with Dale Romans? You've known him for a while, right? Yeah, Dale was like a, a stepfather to me. Uh, he's taking me all across the country going to Dubai with them. I worked for him. Uh, they and I are pretty close. It sort of sounds like, do you ever feel like Jerry Maguire and you've got Rod Tidwell as your one client you're trying to impress people with? Uh, yeah, it, it is a lot like that, actually. Um, I never thought of it that way, but that's a great point. I mean, do you? so what's the goal for you? How do you add somebody else? I mean, if McMahon has success, then is it easier for you to go out and have, you know, more guys that are, that are working with you? Um, yeah, it's with it being my first year, I promised CJ um, until we get to New Orleans this winter that uh, he'd be my only client. And then you could have up to two, and I might seek somebody else out um, and try to sell them also. You can only have two clients as an agent? I didn't realize that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. All right. Uh, what about you? What about your plans? Do you plan on going to college at some point, or is, is this what your life's work's going to be, and is it something that is in your future? At this point, I just plan on uh, working something having to do with the horse industry. Um, hopefully this pans out, and this is what I can do. You know, it's a lucrative job, and it doesn't take too many brains to do it. So <laughs> I'd like for this to pan out. you got a backup plan, though, right now. you you, you got a lawn service on the side, too. you got something to pay the bills in the meantime, right? Yeah, exactly. In my lawn company, you know, we're doing very well. We started two years ago, and we've really grown. Well, what about a pick uh, for the Belmont then? And we have a rematch of the first two winners' legs of the Triple Crown. Your guy who's in this profession every day. Let's get your pick for it. Um, you know, I don't know what Orb's deal was last time, but uh, Bowden Soul, uh, Robbie Alvarado. I know Robbie. I talked to him the other day. He just thinks this is the world of this horse. This horse is training really well, and 
I'm starting to think that the Derby wasn't a fluke and he might run really big in the Belmont. So you've got him winning, or who do you have on top there? I'm going to, I'm going to put him winning. i got faith in him. Well, Robert, Rocco, Cotter, best of luck to you as you, as you move forward in this, uh, both with, uh, with your current client, maybe add another, but appreciate the time here uh, this evening. Thank you very much.